Mushoku Tensei or Jawas Reincarnation, the official light novels for the English translations just finished up at volume 26. I read all 26 volumes. And it's interesting because this might be objectively the best isekai that I've read, which would explain its popularity, but it's definitely not my favorite. I want to talk about the series as a whole and the isekai genre, because the isekai genre is interesting in that you have a ton of isekai out there, but a lot of it is not very good. And there's a lot of tropes to get used over and over again to the point where it feels generic. And I think this is one of the few series that actually takes advantage of being an isekai story. A lot of isekai stuff kind of devolves into self-insert nonsense or a crazy concept. A lot of it is unfinished and still going. You end up with a lot of overpowered main characters with harems and fan service. And they don't usually take themselves too seriously. There are some great ones like this. Obviously, you have stuff like Konosuba. You have stuff like R. Ferretta, which isn't really too serious. Clearly self-insert. You have stuff like Cheat Skill in Another World, which is clearly a self-insert and not very serious. You have stuff like Shield Hero, where the official version might not finish, or there's been no status update since like volume 22, and it's been three years. I think Jobless Reincarnation might be the best isekai, even though it's not my favorite. First of all, the fact that it's completed is a huge positive for it, because so many of them aren't. You have stuff like Sword Art Online, which I know there's debate if that's isekai because it's a virtual world but the author just keeps going and going and going. I just mentioned Shield Hero, which the web novel finished. I don't know what's going on with the light novels. You have stuff like R. Ferretta, where you get massive power scaling to the point where the end of the story is insane. I've read all the R. Ferretta books, but the show's still going. I'm not going to talk about any spoilers in this video. I mainly just want to talk about broadly why I think it's objectively the best one. And I think it's the best one because it uses the Isekai concept to give our main character, Rudy, who was a piece of shit in his first life, a second chance at life. And in this second chance, he makes the most of it. A lot of isekai, you'll see where they go to this world, they kind of live out this fantasy. And the fact that it's a fantasy world doesn't really come into play that much. A lot of them, what they'll do is in the beginning, their motivation is to get home. And then they end up liking life better in the other world. It kind of becomes irrelevant after a little while. Even Mobu Seka later in the series addresses sort of the conflicts between his values and being from Japan and living in this other world that has a totally different set of values. Mobu Seka is trapped in a dating sim. It's one of my favorites, actually. Another thing that this one does incredibly well is the world building. The show touches on a lot of the world building, but if you read the books, it really gets into it. So Rudy learns the language there. He learns the beast tongue. He learns the languages of the other continents to some degree. He learns their magic system so he can make the most of his abilities. We explore the entire world. We see all the different cultures. There's a whole really in-depth history. Some of the characters are still alive from that history. If you've seen the anime, he's obviously already met Kirishika, who's a little demon lord lady, who's actually been around for all that history. So there's a lot of this stuff, and there's no really wasted characters. A lot of characters come and go throughout his life in the series. And because we get time jumps, even the side characters go off and live their own lives. So you don't end up with this thing where... Every character around him just abandons their life to join his party, and then he keeps going, which is a very common trope. And when Jobless Reincarnation does go into the kind of tropey stuff, it does handle it well. I'm not going to spoil anything, like I said, but it definitely hits some of the tropes. Obviously, Rudy's very powerful, and something really smart that this series does, this will be a very vague spoiler, but it's something you've already witnessed in the show, and that's that Rudy is not the most powerful person in the series. He is very powerful, enough to be useful, but there are a lot of really strong people in this world. He's finding his way to cooperate and navigate dealing with the upper echelons of power in this world, because there's a whole world of people. You have all these legendary figures that are still alive. So he's not just OP running around, exploding everything and beating everybody up. And I think that was a really smart decision from the author and one that you don't really see too many authors make. I mean, I wouldn't say Jabba's reincarnation is as good as like Lord of the Rings, but it does do a lot of things that Lord of the Rings does, and it does them well. He always feels like the underdog. He's always taking on challenges. The way that he wins battles as the series goes on is smart. He's not just overpowering people. And obviously in Lord of the Rings, you have this thing where their army is always the underdog and they're getting help from people. There's a lot of similarities to that. Obviously in the end, they don't even fight Sauron because their plan revolves around not letting Sauron come back. And Rudy is in a similar boat where he's trying to get people to cooperate with him to help him fight somebody. I won't say who because I don't want to spoil anything, but it's not just one man on a mission 
taking over the world. <laughs> he has to get people to work with him. He helps people. He's very flawed as a character. As far as the story itself goes, there's not really any loose plot threads that just go unresolved. All the side characters pop in and out of his life because so much time is covered. Obviously, if you're watching the anime, it's covered from the time he was born until he's 16 already. And you'll see these kind of time bumps throughout the story. There is one plot contrivance that I'm not a huge fan of, but the twist that it provides is really awesome, so you can kind of let it slide. There's a bunch of twists and turns, a bunch of betrayals, a bunch of people who help him that he wasn't expecting. So there's all kinds of stuff that goes on throughout the series. I'm assuming that season three is going to get made into an anime. I think from the second half of season two that we have coming up in April through season three will be the best part of the series. Season one, you're kind of seeing the world. Season two is kind of laying the groundwork for the rest of the story. And season three is where you really get into the meat of it. And there's a bunch of stuff that happens. It's really awesome. And I think it's one of the most complete stories that I've seen, especially as far as Isekai. I really don't like when stories end with the guy gets his girl or his harem or whatever, and he lives happily ever after. <laughs> and that's kind of all you get with a million plot threads open and all that kind of stuff. I said I won't spoil anything, but this is going to be a very vague spoiler if you care. So just skip the next like 15 seconds. The story actually covers his entire life, which is awesome. So you get an entire story of a man's life from beginning to end. And you get to see the resolution for everything, which is great. Okay, so the spoiler is done, but it really is just crazy how much goes into the world building and how all the side characters are important, how they all have their own lives and their own goals and their own journeys. It has no problem killing people off. And Rudy's journey really encompasses him going from a sack of shit to becoming a decent man throughout the course of his life. And I think that's part of what makes it a pretty good story. There's so much stuff now that's very nihilistic and negative and everything is meaningless that it's good to see a redemption story like this where he's still flawed, he still has his issues, but overall it's a positive journey and he's a much better man by the end of it. I do have some minor criticisms. There's some stuff in the books that I don't like. You see this all the time where people debate if he's a pedophile because if you've seen the anime, obviously he loses his virginity at like 13 to Eris who's 14 or 15. So mentally he's like 50, and she's a teenager. I personally don't think it's pedophilic, but there is some stuff in there that I think is weird. He sees his half-sister Aisha at one point, and she's like 10, and she's messing with him by being like kind of the stereotypical Japanese flirty little sister thing that I don't really understand. And he like kind of goes out of his way to say he doesn't find anything about her attractive. And there's more to it than that in the book, but the way that it comes across to me is kind of like, eh. Is that really necessary to have him say he doesn't find a 10-year-old attractive? So to me, that kind of stuff is actually more questionable than him dating people his age in the story. And I don't want to go on a philosophical tangent about this, but there's plenty of people who are mature and immature for their age. You have kids who end up being kind of savants who understand things that adults don't even understand intellectually. I don't think anybody would say that they should be dating adults. But I don't want to go down that whole path. But I mainly just wanted to say I do think this is probably the best isekai without giving away any spoilers, so I know it's very vague. But the amount that it accomplishes and how well it executes everything is really impressive. Even though it's not my favorite, it's still very good. I mean, I read all 26 books, so obviously I liked it. I was discussing this with a friend the other day. I'm actually not sure what my favorite isekai is. I really like Shield Hero, even though a lot of people think it gets worse as it goes on. I still like it. Konosuba is done. Konosuba was great. It's hilarious from beginning to end. The characters are who they are. But that's definitely one where I wish the ending had been a little bit more wrapped up. I kind of wonder if the author wants to come back to it later. I can't tell. ReZero is very, very good. That one's going to end up being like 50 books, it looks like. But depending on how that one ends, that could be the best one, I think. Overlord, I fucking hated. You have stuff like No Game, No Life that is still going. You have stuff like that time I reincarnated as a slime, which got much better with the second season. But I haven't bothered to read the books. I just don't know if I'm that committed to the series to read like 25 books or whatever it's at. Mobu Seka is coming up in the last book. That might be my favorite. So there's a lot of good ones, but I do think that objectively, overall, Jobless Reincarnation is probably the best. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It gets better as it goes, as far as I'm concerned. Season one gets pretty good from about episode four or five all the way on. Season two has been pretty slow for a lot of people, I think. And I think the second half of season two will pick back up and really bring a lot of people back in. And then season three will be the peak of the series. So hopefully it gets animated soon.
But I want to keep going. I just kind of wanted to talk about it because I just finished up the books. I really enjoyed them. I appreciate that the author took the time to end it the right way, that the world building was so thorough throughout, that the characters were very distinct throughout, that they had their own goals and journeys, that people died, all of it. He nails a lot of it. So I think it's worth a watch. And if you enjoy the watch, I think it's probably worth the read. But that's it for me for this one. If you finish the series, let me know what you think. Obviously, I respond to all the comments that aren't just insults. Like and subscribe and all that shit. Thanks. See you.